All right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, now we're talking to Andy Greenberg. He uh, writes for Forbes magazine, and uh, he recently interviewed Julian Assange, which is uh, pretty damn cool, and wrote a, a great story about uh, all the different uh, new leaks that might be coming forward. Andy, welcome to the Young Turks. Thanks very much. Glad uh, to be here. Great to have you here. Uh, first, you know, just a, a small point on how you got the interview. I find that really interesting. How does a guy who's in hiding reach out to you, and how do you guys meet? How did that work? Well, I reached out to him, but but definitely it was complex and it took me months. And uh, I can I should probably not say too many of the details of it. Um, I guess for logistical reasons, but also to kind of I, I so it's a bit of secret sauce too, I guess. But let me I can just say that it began with um, you know encrypted encrypted chat uh, conversation with someone whose name it took me months to even find out and and maybe several, I think, three more intermediaries before I finally even heard from Assange. Well, uh, I'm going to rank that as badass. Okay, uh, so <laughs> very, very cool. So now, uh, you found out about some of the new leaks that might be coming that don't have anything to do with the government. Let's uh, tell the good folks at home what those are. That's right. Well, specifically one um, new leak that Assange says that he'll reveal in early 2011, which is tens of thousands of documents from some major U.S. bank. Um, he wouldn't say which bank, and he wouldn't say what exactly those documents revealed, but he said that they would detail some kind of ecosystem of corruption, uh, basically uh, not just a smoking gun pointing to some sort of unethical behavior, but but actually the whole, uh, all the motivations of the executives and how they talk about what they're doing. Um, it should be, a, I mean, he, he, he promised that it would be a big scandal. You know, I find that to be really encouraging because, because uh, <laughs> to me, it sounds like real journalism, uh, and and being able to find out what the motivations of these guys are uh, when our government is, you know, is, in my opinion, asleep at the wheel and, and not going to investigate this. But what I'm even more excited about is the idea of this being broader. So, uh, first of all, let me ask you: Has Assange does it, done this in the past uh, in regards to companies? Absolutely. In, in fact, before this year, when he sort of started to laser focus on the U.S. government, he definitely exposed several private companies in the past. There was uh, the bank Julius Baer, the Swiss bank that was hiding its uh, its clients, some of its clients' profits in the Cayman Islands. Uh, probably even more significant was the the loan book of Kopfing Bank, uh, the biggest Icelandic bank, which collapsed a couple of years ago, and then. Uh, subsequent to its collapse, somebody leaked the loan book, the entire collection of of who Kupfing was giving loans to, to WikiLeaks, and WikiLeaks published it. It turns out that Kupfing had been giving billions of dollars of loans to its own executives and their companies with little or no collateral. It was a huge scandal in Iceland. Right, and so that opens up a whole different can of worms, which I think could be really positive, because now don't companies have to worry about anybody inside the building could be a leaker and if that's the case well then sh internally don't they have to be a little bit more careful about what they decide that they're going to do whether it's a healthcare company saying hey you know what we're going to throw 10,000 people off the rolls or or how they treat their employees etc I, def I definitely agree I mean I think that WikiLeaks is just this, the tip of this iceberg that's going to you know, be um, like a, a whole it's going to change the way the business is done. There are going to be copycats. There are going to be you know, people who see this example, and I think it's going to inspire a whole new age of involuntary corporate transparency. Yeah, they, we were promised corporate uh, transparency overall by the government. We haven't really gotten it. In fact, they're furious that's, about that's this right. transparency. And WikiLeaks has been, very, has been very pointed about the fact that Obama has promised transparency, and in fact, he, you know, they've, uh, they haven't reacted well to the transparency that's been forced upon them in the last few days. Well, actually, I, I want to get back to the other uh, possible WikiLeaks uh, in a second, but now, now that you brought that up, you know, we, we've been playing clips here on the show of Republicans calling Assange, uh, you know, uh, New Cambridge called him an information terrorist. Uh, you know, Sarah Palin famously said he's like Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. Uh, Bill O'Reilly and Huckabee have called for executions, at least of Private Manning and perhaps of Assange as well. Uh, are you disturbed by you know what? What these, this turn against journalists uh, who do these, who report on these leaks? I am uh, disturbed by it, and I'm also disturbed by the fact that the New York Times has. Uh, it, it seems in public interviews that Bill Keller, for instance, has no interest in defending WikiLeaks, and in fact, 
wants to distance the New York Times from WikiLeaks and kind of push them aside and make sure that any regulations that that fall on WikiLeaks don't fall on the mainstream media. I, although, I mean, I, I certainly don't completely approve of what WikiLeaks does. I, I believe it's it it is a kind of a dangerous amount of power for one man, Julian Assange, to wield. Uh, I do see what they're doing as basically a kind of journalism, although sort of journalism on steroids with no accountability. Uh, I uh, have to be honest. Uh, you know, look, if I'm the government, uh, I, I would go to punish Manning because we can't have people deciding on their own what they're going to leak, et cetera. I get that. I get that the government has to do that, right? But when it comes to the reporter who's reporting that leak, uh, I think it's an incredibly dangerous precedent to start referring to them as information terrorists. Because who's next? I mean, you interviewed Julian Assange. Are you next? You know, if it's just, it's incredibly scary. But, you know, I'm honestly, I'm a little disappointed by the rest of the mainstream media. I don't know if it's that they're scared by the government saying, oh, you're with the bad WikiLeaks people, or if they just are embarrassed that, that Julian Assange could pull this off and they couldn't. A am I being right. too harsh on them, or, or, or do you have similar concerns? Well, I think it remains a big question why we, I mean, I, I include myself, have not been able to, you know, Assange has made it look easy to get people to leak gigabytes of data, tens of thousands of incriminating documents to him. And part of that is a, is a technological um, feat, that he, he has created a system that convinces sources that they, they are secure and, and anonymously leaking things to him. But part of it seems to be just his, his, um, his, his attitude, that he promises that this stuff will actually be published, that he, he's looking for substantive documents. He doesn't want something that just gets page views or you know, make, tells people what they already know. Right. And um, let's go to the, back to the bank that he's going to leak on. Now, uh, you know, there was this glowing profile of Jamie Dimon in New York Times Magazine over the weekend, which I thought was atrocious, to be honest with you. Uh, and it, you know, he's, he's the one banker who is so risk averse, but uh, will you look at that, they lost $51 billion anyway, uh, but he says they couldn't have seen it coming. Uh, is it possible that when you, we see the documents that Assange is going to leak, that it's going to be patently obvious that these banks definitely saw it coming and that they've been lying all along? Well, I, I, honestly, I, I can't speculate on exactly what is going to be in this leak, you know, but um, I, I, I fear that Assange may be overestimating the impact of his leak again. I mean, it would, it would be great to see, uh, you know, to some extent scandal exposed. We all enjoy that in financial journalism. But... Uh, at the same time, you know, it's every bank in, in the U.S. has been pretty well scrutinized over the last couple of years. So, uh, you know, as, as much as anybody enjoys a good muck raking, you know, I'd, um, I I, sh I can't say that you know Assange will absolutely have something really juicy on his hands that's going to, as he says, take down a bank or two. You know, he's he does have a tendency sometimes to overestimate the impact of his leaks. Right, I hear you. And look, that c could be the case. Uh, and p p part of that I is that the impact is not, it gets muted by the other media going, ah, whatever, right? Uh, in my well, opinion. that's true. Right? Yeah. And then, but here, I, I don't, I think the government's part of the cover-up when it comes to the banks. You know, they, they gave them all this money. They lent them all this money. We found out $3.3 .3 trillion worth of loans to the banks. So they were now also on the hook. So I, I'm not convinced that any regulators uh, saw what was in the banks and, would expose it without Assange. I mean, that's part of why I'm so excited about these idea of the WikiLeaks that we might have real accountability. So, to to go back to that point, let's talk about Iceland a little bit. Uh, what are, what's the law that they're thinking you're passing to encourage more leaking? Right. Well, after this coupling collapse and and the and WikiLeaks exposure of how that the anatomy of that collapse, Iceland really. Um, I mean, WikiLeaks became a household name and. Um, Assange visited Iceland, gave a big speech about how Iceland could become a kind of Switzerland of bits. And the results, part, uh, partly from Assange's own work and partly from you know, the act activists in Iceland, has been this thing called the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative, which is a whole series of bills that would make Iceland the free speech capital of the world. Awesome. Uh, so how, how, would that, how would that work? Uh, you know, so, like, I have trouble wrapping my mind around this. So does a journalist... Uh, in Russia somehow get that information to what is the coolest thing in the world, the Thor data center, um, and then they publish it? How does, can you give us a little sense of how it might work? Well, the idea is that uh, Iceland would, would pass all these laws that protect, that protect whistleblowers, that protect communications with journalists, 
And then media organizations, whether they be you know some kind of WikiLeaks copycat or you know just a an investigative mainstream media outlet, could set up in Iceland and and host their company the same way that you know a bank might incorporate in. Um, or uh, another company might incorporate in the Cayman Islands to avoid taxes. You know, they, they could um, these media companies could set up in Iceland to avoid the legal pressures to reveal their sources, or uh, you know, to 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 be defamed, or you know, to. to the other problem is that uh, as it stands today, you can use the libel laws of practically any country in the world to sue a publication, and Iceland would would also protect. Uh, publications from that threat, too. So the idea is it would be a haven for all these kinds of organizations. Uh, that also sounds excellent to me, but God, how much pressure is Iceland going to get from the United States and other countries? Right, yeah. I mean, the, I, I admire Iceland for its tenacity. I mean, it's, it's a really unique country, but Iceland has 300,000 people, uh, and they are they're not part of the EU, but they are part of the European economic area and a, a U.S. ally, and, and they might come under enormous pressure from countries that just dwarf them. You know? So um, I, we'll see whether these laws are, in fact, passed and whether they can stand up to the pressure internationally. And, Andy, finally, what, you know, I mentioned in passing, what is the Thor Data Center? <laughs> the Thor Data Center is just a wonderfully named data center on the outskirts of Reykjavik. In fact, Iceland is the perfect place for data centers because they have all this cheap geothermal energy that they can use to power servers, and they have all this Arctic air that they can, you know, just fan in to cool off the servers. So they're, they have this, they're trying to replace their totally destroyed banking sector with data centers, and soon those data centers, like the Thor data center, could be full of all of this sensitive, you know, um, scandalous information. It's it will be an interesting industry to watch in Iceland. You know, the final thing, Andy, is that, you know, uh, part of the reason I love this transparency so much is because, you know, of course, I, I work in the media and I actually want to find out the truth and, and share it with folks. Sure. Uh, you know, the other is that you get a sense of what isn't happening. Like, so if we, everything gets leaked and turns out the aliens didn't land in Area 51. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, you, you know, it's a funny way of putting it, but in reality, you figure out, oh no, no, well, there wasn't a conspiracy to do X, Y, or Z. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. No, I agree. And in fact, that's you know, a point that that hasn't been made enough. I think is that, despite all the terrible things that have been revealed in these government leaks, at the same time, you know, we're we're not finding that there have been some sort of secret, you know. Um, genocide or like organ harvesting conspiracies you know we, we're seeing exactly all the warts of the government and in the end you know they, they you know I, I guess I shouldn't pass judgment but but as terrible as as these things are they could have been worse yeah and just real quick so the audience understands what I'm talking about give a specific example like in Turkey they're outraged at what the, apparently the uh, ambassador was telling uh, the folks back at home about the Prime Minister of Turkey but you never see in any of the cables this plot by America to overturn the Turkish government, which is always what you hear in Turkey. Having grown up in Turkey, everyone's like, oh, of course, the Americans, they always want to, you know, destroy us. And you right, see the yeah. cables, and no, that's just not true. At the same time, like, there a similar example is that you know, we, there's so much fear on, on the left that America is manufacturing a conspiracy that Iran wants nuclear weapons. And in fact, the entire Middle East is also terrified of Iran, it turns out, thanks to these cables. So sunshine, I really do believe, it doesn't just expose scandals, but it, it can just clear the air, like you're saying. Absolutely. Andy Greenberg from Forbes talked to Julian Assange, wrote a really interesting article about it. You should check it out. Andy, thanks so much for being on. We really appreciate it. It's been it. a pleasure. Thanks. All right. We'll be right back.